Hi, welcome to Revive Ministries. Today, we continue the discussion on finding hope. I'm not joined with anyone today, but I wanted to make sure each week to cover this month's topic. It's not the end, finding hope. I share a little bit more more about my story um, and how it relates with this topic. But before I begin, disclaimer, if you are in crisis, if you are struggling out there right now, um, I encourage you to find professional help. The crisis hotline, if you are in the States, are 1-800-273-8255. And that is, um, I let me just put it on the screen, I'm sorry. Um, right here it's it's 1-800 again 273-8255 um like every single episode i've been trying to um always start have consistency with how we start and that's one way we start is a quote and it's from jack canfield it says everything you want is on the other side of fear you know Fear is a, you know, I had to look up the actual definition of fear. I, I thought it was very interesting what it revealed to me when I was reading it. It said, the definition of fear, as a noun, is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. You know, the word, the one word that comes to mind when I think of this is uncertainty. You know, the it rings deep you know being up here and struggling with symptoms and recovery for almost two decades it can play a toll on your perception and your perspective of yourself and how you fit in and the others around you you know um, i feel like value was a very important ingredient to all that and my value was very low because i was not a b or C. I know some of us right now this this will be uploaded the day before Christmas. And when you think about Christmas, you think about many different things, being many different types of people, or just the holidays in general. It rings different memories. And some of those memories may be amazingly joyful. But at the same time they can really shift quickly to just be something fairly tragic I feel um, it can be that that contrast that is a struggle during this time of year so I think values one of at least in my story and what I've heard in other stories that it's, it's a very important component that sometimes can be overlooked there's always this um Uh, I don't know, sometimes I feel like there's some urgency in life that is unwarranted and uh, a bit of, a bit of guilt um, and that surrounds at least my experience with me and my uh, in my family, you know, especially um, how much uncertainty I was feeling at the time at the thick of my re- uh, of my crisis point in my recovery of mental health and I'm um, but one thing that was apparent that the fear the fear that you know the definition right here the fear the belief that someone or something is dangerous or likely to cause pain or a threat was very apparent in my life fear was consuming life unfortunately became more about maintaining it and not living and that means different for each individual and um, that that is the unique thing about recovery and how we describe it because it's not just one thing that contribute where I'm at today. It's not just one person. And it's good to understand that when you're flipping the page and you're seeing someone suffering, you may not be the one who helps that person or brings that person to an understanding that you feel will benefit them. It's a harsh reality when you realize that you can't help everyone and um, and being okay with that. Um, 
there's some important lessons I remember in my experience and that I still um, I feel has helped me move forward. You know, when I was a kid, there was a shirt that said, no pain, no gain. I used to run track and field. I used to do some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And I remember that was the thing. But I think some of, the, some of it um, kind of applies, especially in my experience, that sometimes pain may be very necessary in truly healing and growth. There has to be some, you know, it's very easy for us. And I, I'm not, no judgment, because I'm guilty of it, just like everyone else, of wanting the easy way out. There's, there's, there's attraction to comfort. And for me, sometimes those comfort, those comfort zones can be that stumbling block, pulling us back, being, as I said, like, as we mentioned before, afraid or have fear to, to go above that. You know, Jack Hanfield, like he says, sometimes everything we want is on the other side of fear. And some of those fears are held on to because we're comfortable. And I'm not saying this spitefully because I know I was comfortable. I was comfortable with the amount of uncertainty and certainty that I assumed I had. But I really um, was just maintaining, in my view, my perception, perception my life. Um, one other thing that I learned was you will never pay back those who helped you in your life. And that's okay. I'm not, I'm not just referring to monetarily. And I actually would actually can, I would rather not even talk about monetarily because that gets funny. I'm talking about present, being present with someone listening, actively listening to one another Knowing that, you know, you may not have all the answers and you may not know what to do next. Just just listening and being present. I know there's family members who've done that. I know that there are family members who also try to find ways to help me. And with all that said, I can never pay them back and that's okay. There's three quotes that may remind me and help shape shaped how I see my relationships and communications. The one's from Kath, Catherine, I think it was Kathleen Pulsfer. She said, communication sometimes is not what you first hear. Listen not just to the words, but listen for the reason. I feel this is very important for us to understand. We have to learn the context of why people say, you know, a lot of times we, we just so much disagree with other people and it's more comfortable to be with people who are like-minded like how we think but at the same time it is I find it counterintuitive and real true growth you know communication is not just you know learning and listening it's not just listening to what you agree with it's also listening to those you don't agree with and not immediately just stretching and concentrating on the words, but also listening to the reasons. But this is important to understand that you can't help everyone too, because all of us play a part. So it may seem daunting, and it is. And that's why it's very important that all of us, at least in my view, that it's not just me talking to X, Y, Z. It's also other people doing the same, because I know my approach, my how, what I would say may help some people, but it may not help everyone. That's why with this Revive Ministries podcast and its new outlook, everyone's stories matter, whether uh, um, family members, friends who are suffering, just overall wellness, understanding that they're all linked together. You know, the another quote that I, um, I really like is from Dale Carnegie. I think as a leader and as a person so passionate of like helping people and trying to share some positive things that help me, this has helped measure my approach. It says you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. You know, I, I know in my recovery there's a lot of times I try to make people understand or see things the way I see them. 
um, make them interested, even if it's even if it's a great idea. But a lot of times, like the quote before, when you stop looking at people, things as right or wrong. I'm not saying there isn't things that are more helpful or better for their wellness. I'm not saying that, but people are not static. You know, there's no, at least in my, my experience with relationships and the connections I have, there's no equation that fits that situation. And even if there is, people change so quickly. And that's saying like people are, the relationships you have at the very least continue to evolve and change because time changes. And to be honest, we cannot measure time without change. You know, it, like the fact that the sun goes up, the sun comes down. Night, day, all these things, the seasons and all that stuff is our way of knowing what time of day or year it is. Well, it, it, the measurement of time is, is fundamentally needs the process of change. So for me, understanding that concept and understand that being more interested in people that I may not agree with at all will make me make me um, connect with them better. And at the end of the day, I appreciate those people who may have not agreed with me before, but they listened. You know, and I found that very much um, a big contribute. Uh, encouragement it was more encouraging to hear to see someone actually listen and allow myself to be heard like i said many times in the podcast that one of the biggest struggles at least in mine and what i've heard is that in, in, in mental health uh, as they coined the phrase the uh, invisible illness because a lot of people use uh, find it convenient to address it when it when if um in various reasons but never really thinking about the person who's suffering um there's a lot of uncertainty and it's hard to sift through it all but recovery sometimes is just not just one thing and it's different for each one of us um another w the last quote that really helps me with connection is the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it takes place George Bernard Shaw. It sounds ridiculous. Like, I talked to someone. Yeah, you may have talked at them. I've been plenty of times I've talked at people because I thought I, I needed to share this. I need to throw everything before I forget. But one thing I also learned is like, not everything needs to be said today. You know, it's just... When you stop, and I was going to get to this, but when you, when the urgency slows down, when you, when you, you, you just stay present with that individual, you set the boundaries that you need and know that you cannot help everyone, but you still are loving and caring for that individual. I find it provides that ability um, to communicate better because you know, not so much just waiting to say something. You actually truly staying present and listen to the person. Um, I find that we can learn a lot from each other by doing that. Um, and you ask us, you might be asking, listening to this, why? Why should I even care about all this? Why should I care about this? I'll say this because our connections matter. The people around us do matter and that I feel however that looks for you is a huge component in our wellness you know having we cannot be locked in a room have a seat and just do well in life by ourselves we are not islands we need each other and to even stretch that because our lives are best experienced shared I'm looking back at my life and, it, and the top five moments in my life was not me by myself. No, it's not me achieving something 
with no one around me it's not me just finding out those things might be encouraging but what i find later on things i'm really excited about really passionate about i want to share it you know why like fundamentally me doing this podcast i share it because i'm I'm, because i'm excited about it and it goes to show that my this experience going through this podcast doing this doing this revive ministries means so much more it being shared you know i could record these things and hold them to myself but i it would not feel the same you know there's something about the connections that matter so much um you know, when we look back at our connections also, they have been, at least in my case, the most precious moments in our lives, my life, but also they can be the most painful ones. And that's where the contrast happens. You know, relationships are risky. They can be. And fear and your comfort zone can prevent us in making them, which can produce a life that is maintained and not lived. Now, I'm not trying to be insensitive. Some people who may, we may look at them and say, oh, their lives are just maintaining the lives. We have no right to judge what is maintained or not lived. That is something that's internal. That's something that you feel that you're, if you, what looks like, what for me looks like being not being lived in my context will look different from someone else but I would say one thing that is apparent is connections and our relations do play a factor in all that and how we view them Um, like I said recovery looks different for each one of us and the one constant in life is change and you know the one thing i feel that has helped me i was touching upon it and i, I kind of misspelled let me just oh, let me just fix that no no it's just um okay yeah i didn't capitalize that but from my experience looking at life as a journey versus a destination has created an environment to learn to grow you know um, <laughs> you know it's just a lot of times in my life I look back and I look well if only only if this happened if only if only if I got this car if only if um I lived in this house or if I made this or did that or got this title then I would can say I made it I feel that puts a lot of pressure on a lot of us and especially those who are recovering maybe struggling to do some of the most basic things or and for uh, for life to be dictated on points there's milestones and I'm not for me milestones are different in my perspective of what milestones are. They're a reminder of where we were and where we are now. But our life, I find the model of life being a journey more, more, um, more uh, impactful, more effective in my recovery because if destination was the whole thing, then when I, in the very beginning, this, my value because I was not A, B, or C will mean so much, I will be stuck because I did not make A, I did not make B, I did not make C. And we know, um, a lot of us know that life doesn't work that way. You know, a lot of us know that um, the uncertainty can be real, especially after this year 2020 was a big shock for us the securities that we held dear um didn't hold 
for some of us. And loss can look like many different things, but um, the loss of a family member, loss of life from the, what's happening to this whole world can can be one of the most impactful things and devastating things in one's life. I remember I don't know, three, four years ago, my grandfather died. I went up to see him at the funeral. And something about loss makes you kind of reevaluate what's really important. And it shakes up the foundation that you think you had. You know, the foundation that ah, everything's okay. You know, this kind of meteor meteorocracy, this passiveness that we tell ourselves because we don't want to really, at least for my case, we don't want to feel feel feelings. We don't want to feel the fact that we did not make A, B, or C. And here I am, seeing someone else who can no longer. And for me, when I look at life as a journey, you know, as we go on a road trip, you seldom, at least for me, like sometimes you can't just sit down, have a sit down meal and have a night, like um, eat more balanced meal when you're driving sometimes, you know, it's depending on the urgency, sometimes what's around you. You just have to be dependent by the, the change of environment, uh, town or wherever you're going to and you make do you adapt to the change um, I like the journey model because there's growth you know that you know that you will be making mistakes sometimes but hopefully you know you will be able to create with yourself or with people around you that are close to you a safe place you know some key ingredients that I found most helpful is gratitude obviously i've spoken of that many of times forgiveness self-awareness increase and increasing and maintaining coping skills and our emotional iq to hold better relationships that's what i found you know but the thing is there's no quick fix one thing i want to tell those who are my peers those who are struggling right now day before Christmas day you know this Christmas Eve when this uploads is it's okay to be not okay it's okay to not be okay you know one of the things that was a relief for me is when I struggle with certain aspects of my symptoms when I stop fighting it when I stop beating myself up because all oh, this symptom came up, I just focus on what coping skills I remembered. Understanding that I don't need to explain every aspect or have everyone understand my mental illness for me to gain value. You know, it just was me reminding myself that it's a journey. Um, you know, um, the one thing I always, I like to say is everyone plays a part, which means the environment needs to be a safe place to be wrong, to foster willingness, you know, willingness, you know, willingness is such a, yeah, to foster the willingness, the willingness to listen and the room to heal. You know, when we look at, it's not the end. I am a lot of, you know, I just want to share this real quick. Um, I want to say that those, you know, I'm Christian and there's a lot of hope when I think about my faith and what it means when I say the end. But I am not denying that, but I'm also addressing something very apparent for a lot of us. We need to stay present. We need to maintain our connections. We need to know and admit to ourselves our connections mean 
a lot more than we'd like to admit. We need to admit to ourselves that we may have dropped the ball time and time again, but know that you and I and all of us will not help everyone, and that has to be okay. And the ones who are struggling and had a lot of help around you, maybe it wasn't ideal, maybe it wasn't right, maybe they didn't understand what you're going through. Understand that's okay. And understand also from my experience that there's things to be grateful for from that support. And for me, my experience from my parents, my brother, my father, all of them, despite at times not agreeing with them, I would say I could never pay them back. And that's okay. I want to say thank you for all of you who supported me throughout the years, either when I did events in person and now through this means. It's the eve of Christmas and Revive Ministry hopes all of you listening are watch and or watching to have a safe and happy holiday season. You know, um, make a call. Make sure if you are in crisis or you know someone is, um, Remember that number that I shared in the beginning, 1-800-273-8255. And I also want to tell those who are listening and watching, to remember stay, to stay updated with all things Revive Ministries through the various platforms, ReviveMinistriesFL.com. I just want to leave you by saying this is goodbye from Revive Ministry. And I have one last quote, and it says, our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. Thomas Edison.